Yes, greetings to all the family. Dr. David Roots, Living Roots. This video we're going to talk about the esoteric meaning behind take no prisoners. Okay, so we many of us may have heard that term, take no prisoners. And um, often that term is used in regards to for example, if someone's going into battle, they would say, take no prisoners, meaning no one's getting left behind. The situation is going to be dealt with completely. The most effective way is to take no prisoners. Uh, to put it quite bluntly, meaning you're not taking anyone into custody, any enemy that you encounter will be cut down you know that's that's the the sort of literal meaning of take no prisoners in a military context okay and we're going to look more so at the esoteric meaning of take no prisoners and how we can use that because one of the principles that the reality operates on okay universal law is as above so below what goes around comes around so things that can manifest in real life we can take esoteric meanings to what is manifest in our internal lives as well and vice versa what you believe, think, actualize and visualize can then happen. So what you actualize and visualize in your mindset can then happen externally. So the principle works both ways, okay? In harmony, oscillation. So take no prisoners. How can we make that more useful to us? And it's a mindset. This is a mindset for developing the highest aspect of yourself okay because this battlefield that we're talking about is the battlefield of your own mind so when we're talking about take no prisoners well if they're in the context of that there is somehow some conflict going on in your own mind somehow there is a um takeover was a better word i'm looking for but there's things going on that have been taken over in your own mind your sovereignty has been breached then it is up to you and no one else to release yourself to vanquish for yourself the conditions from that particular situation and when we're doing this, in order to be successful, you need to take no prisoners, okay? You're taking no prisoners in this endeavor, in this endeavor towards finding your true purpose, living your true purpose, and establish, establishing your authentic self. You need to take no prisoners. If not, you will always be one step behind. Okay, and so what do we mean about that? Well, within our mind, and we're going to go a bit deep here. So if anyone watches my videos and so on, we tend to go deep. Hence, we use the term esoteric, meaning, meaning hidden wisdom. That's what we're talking about. So when we talk about, let's start with this term sovereignty, meaning rulership. Okay. Sovereignty can be established in many ways. You can, you know, be more powerful than somebody and establish sovereignty over them. You can, um, for example, secede sovereignty by its way of a treaty. Okay. Um, you can have all manners of divine, so, sorry, so sovereignty by birthright, like through certain monarchies. Okay. Inheritance, hereditary sovereignty 
the highest form of sovereignty is what I call divine sovereignty, meaning the sovereignty that exists over your own mind, over your own, see, not even your body, because your body, someone can take you prisoner, okay? But no one can prison your own mind. They may try to put it into shackles and so on by, by using various methods, mental slavery, you know, drugs, psychedelics, or you may even imprison your own mind yourself. But your divine sovereignty is established at birth, okay, at conception. You are given the opportunity to be sovereign over your true self. No one can enter that. They can put you in a prison, for example, okay, and lock you up for your lifetime, not feed you, so on and so on. But they cannot access your mind unless you allow people in. So this sovereignty we're talking about is here, okay, within your own consciousness and subconsciousness, your own mind, your own sphere of life that belongs completely to you. But often it's us who sabotages that sovereignty and we take prisoners on that, through that battle that's ongoing with our sovereignty because it's an ongoing battle daily, minute by minute, second by second, not only with nature, with mankind, as well, you know, in terms of the consumerism and all, you know, relationships and all the various different things that others are trying to have you consume. Because the majority of us are, 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 are consumers, we're not producers. And so your sovereignty is always being tested because people want to give you things into your own space, into your hemisphere, your physical hemisphere and your mental and, and divine hemisphere, okay? And during that battle, sometimes you're winning, sometimes you're not, we tend to take prisoners. And what are these prisoners that we're talking about? Because remember, rem remember the quote, it's take no prisoners. Well, some of those prisoners that we take on board, okay? And one thing about warfare, okay, for example, within the um, the Geneva Convention in terms of warfare, there are certain codes by which you have to treat prisoners. You have to feed them, shelter them, you know, humanely, humanely take care of them if you take people prisoners. And that's what we tend to do. We take on these enemies, but we hold them as prisoners. And of course... In order to feed, clothe, and shelter prisoners in real life, that takes away from your own resources. But it's the honorable thing to do, we think. So it's the same in the, in the mental space and in the divine space that we tend to take on these prisoners and we feed them and clothe them and shelter them. And before you know it, they take up residence. Okay? So what are these prisoners? So for example, you have things like the drama that you take on, okay, from the various situations in your life. You have things like sadness and grief. That's an inevitable part of life as we experience loss, okay? You have things like anger, that rage, that fire, that burns that you may need from time to time, but we take it on as a prisoner, okay? You have things like jealousy, the coveting of other people's things because you may want something that they that they um, have and you don't have, okay? There are many of these prisoners. The list can probably go on and on and you can name some of the prisoners, I'm sure, to yourself and every individual mind, okay, aka man, is different, okay? When I say mind, I mean man and when I say man, I mean mind. But in this quest to improve ourselves, live our best life, ascend to our highest self and highest understanding of the world through 
of divine self, you have to take no prisoners. You have to cut the prisoners down and remove them, okay, out completely. No prisoners whatsoever, okay? And so how do we do this? Well, just like you would in a physical scenario of taking prisoners through warfare, you have to send them back to where they came from or you have to eliminate them, okay? That's, that's how it goes. You send them back or you send them to a, a host state where they can become refugees or you have to eliminate them. This is just reality. And it's the same thing with our mental space. If you take on prisoners like drama, sadness, jealousy, anger, um, you know, anxiety, hopelessness, any of those things that you encounter in the battle to be your higher self, you need to send them back on their way. You need to eliminate them. And the way to eliminate them completely is to adopt the opposite of whatever they are. So for example, if it's anger, okay, you need to adopt a mindset of peace, okay? And you need to cultivate a mindset of peace. If it's jealousy, you need to cultivate a mindset of abundance and realize that there's enough and will always be enough and always has been enough for you to have everything you want and for others to have everything they want, okay? If it's sadness that you have imprisoned in your mind, then you need to adopt, okay? Adopt a mindset of joy. And joy comes with gratitude because for every situation that you find yourself in, guaranteed there's someone worse so when you understand that you start to give thanks for what you have and you become joyful if it's something to do with drama you have a lot of drama in your life but then because drama sometimes is necessary isn't it life is dramatic that's 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 the reality of life and we have to adopt an attitude of balance okay anxiety then you have to adopt an attitude of living in the now rather than living in the uh, 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 expectations of what you think is to come, all right? Now, it may not be easy. It may not be easy for some of us and may be easy for, for others and may be easy for, for, for some of us, but not easy for others, depending on your circumstances. But when you fully come into that point, that breaking point in your life where you're ready to ascend to your highest level, whether that's physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, relationship-wise, nothing else will do except to take no prisoners. Okay, this is your mind. This is your life. You only have one life to live. There's no borrowed time when it comes to this aspect of your reality. So this is a message of encouragement, an esoteric look at the term take no prisoners. Okay, and adopt it so that you can live your optimal life without the burdens that others or that the world may put on you. Dr. David Roots, give thanks. Habibi.